This video is about Studio One and colors. I am in Studio One 4.5.1 and um, the reason I'm making this video is there's a forum post out there called Track Colors um, and generously posted by Lawrence is a toolbar add-on um, and in his words it allows you to create, store, import, and export custom color sets. So what's cool about this is that it actually um, fixes what I think is kind of a weird flaw um, with as flexible as Studio One is on doing things like macros and being able to uh, go into the macro organizer and build your own macros, tie them to key shortcuts, its expandability is amazing. Colors, it kind of falls a little short. Now, a lot of people don't like the GUI in general. I personally do. Um, but the individual track colors, I think it's a little weird the way that it's arranged and the way that it works. This um, toolbar add-on that Lawrence has made makes it easy. So I just want to do a quick video on how to install it, what it does, how to use it. So here's what we got. If you go out to the uh, forums on Presonus and you look for this uh, track colors uh, forum post, you'll find Lawrence has posted this and you can go out there and download this track colors package. And then what you do with it is you go find your installation location, Studio 1.4, go into the scripts folder and drop that track colors package there, restart Studio 1, and then it'll work. So here's what we're fixing. Um, if you've used Studio 1 before, you know you can go into any individual uh, track here and you can adjust its colors by clicking in the little box to select that track color and then color it whatever color you want to color it. You can also do the same thing uh, by doing a shift click and multi-selecting and you can change multiples at once like this. What's wrong with this? Well, a couple of things. One, this block of colors appears to be in absolutely no order whatsoever. If there's an order to this, I'm not sure who made it up, but I don't like it. Um, it makes it difficult to choose the same color twice. So looking at these greens as an example of that, let's say I had gone in here and I made my V drums MIDI track this green. And then later I wanted to make these two tracks that same color green. So first problem, as soon as you click on any of the tracks, of course they highlight. So it's hard to tell which color they are because they obviously don't match because they're highlighted. So when you come in here and you're trying to figure out which one of those greens did I select, the highlighted version is what you're seeing, like here, or here. Uh, you see that highlighted version, and you kind of have to guess your way around as to which green was that. Maybe it was that one. And then to see it, you have to select off of it, and now you can see that those are not the same green. Even easier to see here. So we go back in, we reselect like this and we say maybe it was that green I think I got it that time but it's a little frustrating and then you wind up with colors that just don't match and it's you know for anybody who's using colors as a key uh, for getting around their sessions that is uh, kind of irritating the other thing is, is that for as much flexibility as they have in things like macros they don't allow you to change anything about this you can't change the order of these colors you can't change which colors are in here you can't get rid of colors. For example, I would probably never use any of these brownish looking colors. Um, I might rather have a different set of colors there that I could use instead. Um, there's a lot of duplication. Many of these colors look almost identical like these two guys right here. Nearly the same exact color. I don't know who came up with this order, but whatever. So this is what it solves. So once you've done that, that copy of the track colors package into your scripts, when you restart Studio One, you'll see this little button up here. And when you click on that color toolbar, you'll get a drop down of all of these colors visible at once, um, grouped in logical groups. Um, now, of course, one of the things about these groups is this is just the default package. So first of all, even if you're just gonna use that as the default, if I come back in here and I select these um, drum tracks and I say I want them all to be blue now they're all blue and if I ever made this one you know some other blue it's you know fairly obvious um, there's only so many blues that you're gonna have to choose from to get them to match again and they're all together so 
um, it, it's pretty easy to find and they also look pretty different uh, so it's easy to tell them apart now that's if you're just using that default colors package one of the other benefits here is that you can actually um, edit these so I can go into any one of these colors and change it so if you know what the RGB value is of the color that you want uh, then you just put that RGB value in here and there's a thousand different ways to look those up um, but basically you know these numbers are through 255 0 that means no blue 255 means all blue this happened to have been at 102 so you can either drag that slider or you can type in the value here and hit enter and that will set these different colors you can also export and import these colors they even uh, allow you to do an import on hex values so if you're more comfortable with hex than RGB and you happen to have gotten a bunch of hex colors you get a text file like this one um, and you put in your groups of colors where there are two for R, two for G, two for B um, and these are zero zero through FF and hex for each one so if this happened to be zero 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 FF it would be a very bright blue and you can create those and of course since you can create them and you can import them and that means that you can also share them uh, another cool feature here another thing that you can do and you can do this with the default um, the, the default setup as well um, is you can individually color clips so if I had a number of clips in here and I wanted to change just this clip instead of the whole Tom's track to make that stand out I could go in that would do the whole track or if I press this E then I could do just that one and you'll see now that one Tom's clip is really bright instead so that you can make something stand out like that now of course you could use to do this in this little block same way as before same problems as before um, the only way that I've found to clear this is to use that that actually clears the color off of whatever that selected one is. Um, I don't know of another way to do that uh, from the color bar at the top. Maybe there's an answer to that. I'm not sure. Either way, um, you can do that. You can go in here, clear that one out like that, and then it will follow the rules again as to whatever um, you've colored for that whole selection. So the point of this video was just to kind of quickly show how this works, how to get it installed, how to um, how to utilize it, and some of its features. And also for those people who aren't typically on the Presornis forums, maybe happen to be seeing this on my blog post, have an opportunity to uh, see some of the things that's going on in the Studio One community. So I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope it was useful for you, and uh, thanks for watching.